Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed fellow panelists, it is a pleasure and a privilege to join you remotely by video message today for this seminally important side event for the 2024 NPT PrepCon. I regret that I am unable to participate in person in Geneva, but my organization, Citizens for Global Solutions, is nonetheless honored to co-sponsor this event and proudly was among the first organizations to endorse the statement, Common Security versus Nuclear Weapons, How to Replace the Current Reliance on Nuclear Deterrence with Sustainable Security for All which was introduced at last year's PrepCom and is now joined by approximately 170 organizations and was presented at this week's plenary session on July 23rd. As the executive director of CGS, a commitment to a nuclear-free world based on cooperation rather than competition is our raison d'etre. In our foundational document promulgated in 1947, we asserted that we believe that peace is not merely the absence of war, but the presence of justice, of law, of order. The end to the scourge of nuclear war was foremost in the minds and actions of our founding members, including Einstein and Oppenheimer, and all those who would come to follow in their footsteps, who would go on to successfully mobilize citizens in my home country, the United States, to advocate for the 1963 Limited Test Ban Treaty and the NPT, to lead bilateral Cold War era negotiations to dampen escalation, to help establish the Nuclear Prevention Institute and what is today the United States Institute for Peace, and to support subsequent domestic and treaty law in an attempt to bring the rule of law to the anarchic and to prevent the unfathomable. But here I must make a confession. While I stand on the shoulders of my forebears in this mission and attempt to uphold their legacy, I profess that I part ways with one of the most illustrious predecessors in the position that I now hold as lead of my organization. Noted peace activist and successful anti-nuclear campaigner, Norman Cousins, famously said that history is a vast early warning system. Decades after he spoke those words, the hour is late and we have been warned. The canaries in the coal mines have sung and the global alarm bells have been rung. As United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has noted, the doomsday clock is ticking loudly enough for all to hear. As of May, 2024, there were over 120 armed conflicts around the world involving more than 60 states and 120 non-state armed groups. In 2023, an estimated 14% of the world's population lived within five kilometers of violent conflict. Many of those conflicts directly involve or implicate nuclear states, states under their umbrellas, or close allies. Without a change, of course, history stands to be repeated. In the words of Arendt Hati Roy, it is such a supreme folly to believe that nuclear weapons are deadly only if they are used. The fact that they exist at all, their presence in our lives, will wreak more havoc than we can begin to fathom. Nuclear weapons pervade our thinking, control our behavior, administer our societies, inform our dreams. Well, all of us who now have nightmares that take us from Gaza to Kashmir to Zaporizhia, um, can now understand this to be true. The change, of course, that is needed is an evolution of our global conceptualization of peace and security architecture. And we have that opportunity. In addition to this preparatory conference, many of the representatives of states, parliamentary groups, and civil society here may also take part in just a few short weeks in what has been hailed as a once-in-a-generation opportunity for UN reform and seismic change, the summit of the future. For Cousins, relief from nuclear danger required the development of a world conscience, and ultimately, he saw that as the basic requisite for world government. Among the key outcomes of the Summit of the Future is a pact for the future, which must be seen as a statement of world conscience. And we cannot be cowards of this conscience. 
From the timorous text of the zero draft, the current version contains less ambiguous language to act to achieve the goal of a world free of nuclear weapons. By consensus, states, including nuclear states, now explicitly acknowledge that the global security landscape is undergoing profound transformation, and we are concerned about the increasing and diverse threats to international peace and security, including the growing risks of a nuclear war, which could pose an existential threat to humanity. But acknowledging the threat is insufficient. An alternative must be proposed and implemented. That alternative is the common security approach about which you will hear more throughout the course of this session. The common security approach also appears in a civil society-led companion and hopeful complement to the state-led Summit of the Future process, the People's Pact for the Future, which I hope will be shared for, with participants at today's side event. And there, fellow contributors and I assert that building truly durable peace and achieving common security requires a meaningful transition from reactive to proactive approaches that rebuild trust in our collective security system and address both conventional and emerging threats, in, such as nuclear weapons. We call upon states to ensure the full application of international humanitarian law across all weapons systems and environments, we urge member states to adopt policies and practices never to initiate a nuclear war, i.e. no first use policy, and to replace the exclusionary and potentially catastrophic policies of nuclear deterrence with an inclusive approach to achieving common security and to commence the negotiations for phased elimination of nuclear weapons with a commitment to achieve complete abolition no later than the UN centenary. We also urge member states to provide victim assistance and environmental remediation to communities affected by the use of testing of nuclear weapons per UNGA Resolution 78240. And finally, we implore states to enhance efforts to and reduce nuclear risk and promote disarmament by employing international instruments such as the UN Charter to augment non-proliferation and allocate funds for peaceful means. I hope my colleagues on the panel will speak more to how we as civil society work hand in hand with states to tangibly advance these efforts through our legal alternatives to war, law not war initiative and an impact coalition on just institutions and the International Court of Justice. In closing, I would like to return to my predecessor, Norman Cousins, from whom I began this intervention by deviating. Whether seizing the moment of this PREPCOM, the summit of the future, or any day unmarked by a milestone or major international conference. I bear in mind Norman's words. We will not have peace by afterthought. Thank you for this opportunity, and I wish you successful and impactful negotiations.